But I wanted to do a fabric guitar for a while and I found this fabulous green and gold material on Amazon and I bought it maybe about a year and a half ago and finally since I started working with epoxy I thought this was the perfect project to make this killer gold and green Telecaster. I've just got a basic Squire bullet neck by Fender on here. I'm going to make a roasted maple neck here coming up. I will document that process. This is a Kent Tron humbucker, a Kent Armstrong Tele bridge pickup, got some gold hardware on the front and the back. The feathering that I did is with some custom shop paints from TCB Global. Uh, and I sprayed this on with my airbrush and then sealed it in some 2K. Guitar sounds great. It really looks awesome. It's a, a really cool look. <laughs> I applied the fabric down with some regular wood glue and then took the epoxy and poured it on this Promarine tabletop epoxy that I got on Amazon as well. I moved the epoxy across the body and I know that when you get fabric that's got a little bit of height to it or even the Paisley stuff that I've used in the past and you can get like a really cool 3D effect like you see here. And so as I moved the epoxy around, I did not flatten out the material so you can still see some of the lift on the material and it looks really cool. The back side looks outstanding, really nicely glued down. As I'm looking at the feathering of this now, I'm not sure I would have done this again. I think I would have left the guitar with the material. I would have bound it with black. That way I could have tied in the hardware a little bit better and maybe I just would have painted the sides green instead of doing the feathering. Maybe when I do the next one, I'll do that again. But really cool guitar, just a basic Tele bridge. Like I said, Kent Armstrong pickups, uh, standard control wiring, maple neck that I will be replacing at some point. Wanted to show you guys another project and my build process. So let's go ahead and get into the video right here. We're gonna start by unfolding the material here. And it's got a nice wrinkle from being shipped. So I actually got to take this back upstairs and iron it out. It's funny to admit I have to iron out this to get all the wrinkles out, but it definitely needed to be done. You can see as I'm trying to straighten it out here, I just can't get them out. So I went upstairs, took it to my ironing board, and went with a low heat and just got out all those wrinkles. We'll cut this to shape, double check it against my tally template and make sure it fits. And like I said earlier, we're gonna use some regular wood glue. This is tight bond wood glue. I've got a roller that we're gonna roll out the glue. Make sure that it sits correctly. And then we'll come back with the material and drop it on. So I make sure that the glue is even, that I don't have any bubbles of the glue or anything. And we'll place this on and sort of stretch it out and make sure that I don't have any bubbles or anything sticking out. Again, we'll test the template and smooth everything out. And then we're just gonna let it sit. And we let it sit for 24 hours. And then we come back with the epoxy and mix the epoxy. So once it's dry again, we'll just double check where everything's sitting. We're gonna tape on a border for the glue. This is less than ideal. So as we put down the epoxy, we're gonna make this sort of tape dam, and that didn't work out all that well. And I'll show you what I did further on in the video. So this epoxy is a 50-50 mix. So if we do eight ounces of part A, we'll do eight ounces of part B. We'll mix it together, probably spend about five minutes mixing it. And the way I mixed the first batch was not as good as mixing the second batch. I got a little bit too many air bubbles in this first mix. I sort of mixed it too rough and that cloudiness shows a little bit of air bubbles. So we pour on that first batch and this is the trick I was doing to get it all underneath that material. 
And I took a razor blade there and just started sort of popping any of the big bubbles that I see. We come back with my torch, which then gets all the bubbles out. And I spent probably about 10 minutes in total doing this. The heat makes the material a little bit more viscous. And then as I'm moving it around, I can get it to seep in and still keep that 3D effect as then the glue sort of moves underneath the uh, ridges in the material itself. So I probably spent about 20 minutes getting the bubbles out. The way I mixed it was just a little bit more of a pain. But what was really cool about this is you could just sort of leave it at this point and you're done. And even if you don't want to sand it out, you still got a pretty crystal, crystal clear top. Just double checking it. It's looking good. We move it over to the edge of the shop and we just let that sit for about seven days. For the bottom, we're going to do the same thing. We'll apply the glue on. Make sure it's nice and even. I've got no ridges in the glue itself. So you'll see me here moving the glue back and forth, trying to get it to level out. So I've got the material already pre-cut. I took that roller back upstairs, washed it off real quick, and then came back and started rolling this on. And I could feel the glue sticking to it a little bit, and I didn't want to do it that much. So what we did is we took this back upstairs to the bandsaw and cut off about a quarter inch on each side, and then took that lip and built it up with the tape. And now I actually have got a little bit better of a lip than what I had previously just with the tape alone. So this really helps keep that glue all in the same spot and I don't get any leakage. Had a little bit of leakage before on the first way I did it. So again we'll mix the epoxy. I think I did about eight ounces and eight ounces. Mix it up a little bit slower this time. Obviously you can't see that in the fast forward. But see how it's a little bit clearer? Just didn't get as many bubbles building up this time as I did last time. So again, we'll come back with the torch, propane tank here, heat it up, and get it to sit everywhere nicely. A couple spots needed a little bit more epoxy. And again, we'll then take this over to the corner of the shop and let it sit for another seven days. So I put a piece of double stick tape on and screwed in once, was unsure which side was better. And so I just did this just to double check myself. And as I'm cutting it, I realized it didn't really matter anyway. So we cut that off. We then took this to my Craftsman table saw router upstairs and then trimmed off the edge and you can see how thick this material is once I cut this I'll show you that here in the picture so then we'll route it get it all nice and clean and I cut that template as close as I could so I got a little bit easier routing here So go slowly around the edges, get this to route out perfectly. And then we're going to start sanding the sides to get it nice and smooth. And I did a little bit of a trick here. I took three inch blue tape and put this down on my sander so that way I don't actually scratch up the top. I wanted to reduce any scratches that I got in the epoxy, it just causes headaches later. So in this, doing this allows me to do any sanding and not worry about digging up that top. And once we got the tape on, we'll come back and sand this out with 120 and then move up to 220. 
just take it slow. I've got this rigid sander. I've got two of them, one for the sides and then one for the spindle sander. And it's just a slow back and forth process to get those sides nice and clean and ready to finish. So then for the spindle sander piece, I actually just took a couple pieces of wood and built a little sort of table for myself so I knew I wouldn't get any scratches. And here I'm just sanding up that top horn. Make sure it's nice and smooth. And we'll do the inside piece of that as well. Bring this back over to my table and do some routing. I've got my routing template. We're going to do a standard Big D guitars tele here. We're going to do a humbucker in the neck and a regular tele pickup in the bridge. We're going to top route this. Keeps it in line with the pattern and I'm going to be doing some gold hardware on here so I can get this to match up perfectly. So we'll route all this out with the template. We'll then drill out for the wiring. So I've got an extra long drill bit. Drill that out. Vacuum it up. And then take a, a file, one of those ball in files, and make that hole a little bit bigger. Same trick for routing over the roundover. I went ahead and put a little bit of blue tape on the bottom of my router and then we'll go ahead and just route this out on each side just a standard tele route quarter inch I think actually this is 5 16th and then we'll start sanding this down getting those edges nice and clean ready to spray and put a finish on here Lastly, we'll take this over to the drill press and drill out the neck pocket holes. So I've got a 3 16th Lee Valley bit in my template. And we'll just pop these through on each hole. So I really want to reduce the overspray from the 2K onto the rest of the guitar. So I actually mix some 2K in a little bucket here, a little can, and I'm going to paint on the sides. That way I'm sealing up that end grain and I won't have as much overspray on all the other colors I'm going to be putting on here. Not sure if this worked better or if I just had put the color on, but it's something I'd done previously and just painting this on makes life a little bit easier. I think. So then here comes my terrible spray painting. And what we're going to do first is put a yellow base on the sides. And that'll get that green and gold I'm going to use to pop a little bit more. So I was really worried that there'd be too much green. So putting on this yellow base, I was hoping to get it a little bit more gold. I'm not sure if that really worked out the way I wanted it to, but this is just a gun and some custom shop yellow and I'm spraying it on. And I'm still getting a ton of overspray here onto the body itself. You can see as I'm spraying that top is getting pretty yellow. So we put three coats on here, get those sides covered up pretty well. So then with all that overspray we come back with some 320 open grit sandpaper and sand off all that overspray. We do this for the front and for the back. You can see I've got most of that yellow gone. We'll just flip it over on the other side. 
We're then going to mix a custom color here. I've got your show your money green and a green base. And I'm going to add just a little bit of green to the show me your money glitter spray. We'll mix all this up. We should be good to go then with the coloring. So here's my screw up. I'm using a Harbor Freight gun and I begin to spray the sides. It's a brand new gun and the gun starts spitting and leaking all over the place. And I've got a mess at this point. And it's over spraying. It's not nearly as fine as I need it to be. And if you look at my garage floor now, I've got all this color all over the place. So I should have just done my airbrush, which has got a really fine tip, and it doesn't overspray nearly as much as this stupid gun. And so for $13, I've got a mess on my hands. Coloring looks pretty close though, which I'm happy about. You can see my hands now are starting to get a little bit green. Still it's spraying all over the place. And I thought I could feather the edge with this gun and there was no way that was going to happen. You can see the green on my workbench and the gun is just malfunctioning. So we clean off the overspray again, and then we come back with the airbrush. And this is where I really get some really nice results. So we're just gonna spray on that feather of the edge. We'll go around. This again was a Harbor Freight gun. I bought a couple airbrush guns and that other cheap gun. And this actually worked out really well. I think airbrushing the guitar like this is the easiest way to go. And then if you put some 2K right over it, you should be good to go. So we'll feather this on. You sort of lose the effect of it being wallpaper or fabric. The only difference with the fabric is I think you get a little bit more 3D effect. But we go ahead and spray on the front, spray on the back, and we're good with this color. Back is the same process. Just go slow and feather this along the edges, and we're done. We'll then come back with some 2K and put about three coats on. This is one of those Husky guns I reviewed a while ago. And I've got my exhaust fan sitting to the left, which is taking all the fumes out. You can see the fumes zoom out. Got some gloves and an old jacket. And we'll put three coats on, get this to blend up nicely. We'll grab my sander, and with 2K, you can actually power sand some of the stuff out. So I've got some open grit 320. We'll then move up to 800 and then 1500, and then we'll sand the sides with the same process, but we'll do that by hand. This actually is pretty quick. So as caustic as that material is, if you're wearing protection, you can get away with doing this relatively quickly, which is the w one nice thing about 2K. We'll then begin to set this up on my workbench. So we'll take my laser level, find the center of everything, drill it all out, start installing all the hardware, solder the sucker up, and we are close to being done. This last process for me usually takes maybe an hour or two. 
Sometimes I love it, sometimes I hate it. Depending on how the soldering goes. But we got some gold hardware, gold bridge, Kentron humbucker. We're ready to go. So we'll go back live here in video and give you guys a sound clip. As promised, here's a little bit of an extended sound clip. I really, really love the bridge pickup. It sounds outstanding. Got that perfect, perfect tully twang. That's the neck and it's very mellow. Just huge difference. Perfect for that country chicken picking. I gotta learn to play some of that country picking with this thing. It just sounds outstanding. So thanks for watching guys. We will see you in the next video.